there, my name is Amy. Now, if I said to you, what is the connection between sweaty saddles, eucalyptus, leather, spice, white pepper, black olive, bacon and blackberries, what would you say? Although it sounds bizarre, these are all in fact aromas and flavour compounds that can be found in one of the two grapes I'm going to be talking to you about today. And if you haven't already guessed, this seemingly strange spectrum of aromas and flavour profiles comes from one grape called Syrah or Shiraz. Before we go any further, Syrah and Shiraz are genetically the same grape with two different names. Some people get confused because there is also a city in Iran called Shiraz and it also has uh, a grape, but that grape is Shirazi, excuse my pronunciation, um, and it's genetically different from the Syrah Shiraz we are going to be talking about today. So why does the grape have two different names? Well, very simply put, the name on the bottle, Syrah or Shiraz, usually denotes the style of wine produced in that bottle. Syrah tends to be old world, Shiraz tends to be new world. The grape changes as well in character according to the climate. So usually in warmer climates such as Australia, Argentina, Chile, for example, which are all new world countries, you'll see a softer wine, it'll feel more full in the body, um, and that will be denoted as Shiraz, whereas the cooler climates, uh, such as the Rhone, which are producing super fine wines as well, uh, tends to hold Syrah on the front of the bottle. What's really interesting, and, and why both of these regions, particularly the Rhone and Australia, uh, particularly the Barossa Valley in Australia, hold such uh, an important place for this vine is that it was actually James Busby who took the original vines, so the original vines are from the Rhone Valley, took them from the Rhone to Australia in the late 1800s when he visited there um, and began planting in Australia and continued planting for the next 170 odd years. Um, whereas in France, France actually suffered a huge plague called phylloxera in the middle to late 1800s, which wiped out the majority of its vineyards. So although the grape originated there, the oldest vines, the oldest Syrah or Shiraz vines in the world actually exist in Australia. Now, it's a grape with very thick skins, a bit like Cabernet Sauvignon. So it needs a warm or moderately warm climate in which to ripen evenly and in which to grow well. You'll have probably heard any eager wine enthusiasts or wine tasters almost innately knowing that the colour of Shiraz or Syrah is very, very dark and it does produce this almost inky colour to the wine and that is because of the thickness of the skin. Uh, it means the skin to must ratio, must, we're talking about that juice, the fleshy juice that's produced when the wine is pressed is a lot higher and the the colour of the wine comes from the skins so it just it's a lot higher it produces a much darker coloured wine. The Rhone Valley, particularly Northern Rhone, is regarded as the benchmark style for Syrah wine. Uh, some even call it the mecca of the Syrah grape because of its fabulous conditions which are also reflected in its fabulously high prices for some of the wines. South facing slopes mean there is maximum sunshine exposure for the grapes, they're able to ripen a lot more evenly and they produce very robust but refined elegant wines. Um, blackberry, raspberry, violet, all of these kind of black fruit aromas and flavours can be found in the wines from this area. There are also 73 different crus within Cote Rodi, so it's really worth, if you are picking up a wine from there, to check which cru you are uh, tasting from, because this will alter slightly the characteristics of the wine as well. If you're looking for something still Northern Rhone, but more economical, areas like Saint-Joseph and Cros-Hermitage are the largest 
appellations within the Northern Rhone and produce a whole range of styles from easy drinking to really kind of bold examples of the grape. It's worth doing your homework a little bit just to check the producer because it is really varied according to which producer you buy from. But generally, uh, you can find some really lovely examples of Sierra grape from these two areas as well. Hermitage, not to be confused with Cos Hermitage, which we've just mentioned, which is that large area. Hermitage is a, a sort of a micro area that also produces incredibly robust Rhone Syrah. Um, the price is also very high, but they are known for being bold um, and they definitely need time to soften out. So if you buy a, a Hermitage Syrah, you'll need to leave it for at least five to ten years before you even open it, otherwise it's just going to be far too closed. These wines will also give you flavours of smoke, of blackberry, blueberry, uh, and of course some spice in there as well. And the final area of real note, I wish we could cover them all because it's such an eclectic area, uh, would be Cornas, which is also known for producing very, very big uh, personality wines and really, really worth trying if you get the chance to. Why are these wines so expensive? Well, aside from the fact the conditions are excellent for growing Syrah grape, they, 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 it's well known that Syrah likes a view. Um, and a lot of the Northern Rhone is steeped in rolling hills um, and particularly south facing hills that are protected, as I mentioned, from northern winds and just produces really, really great conditions for growing this grape well. The size of the appellations are also tiny, a lot of them. Um, and one thing to notice is the smaller the yields, the more concentrated the wine. So there isn't much bulk production at all going on in Northern Rhone. This also pushes the price up. There's a lot of hand harvesting that goes on, you know, machines can't reach the vineyards. So all of these little things mean that the price of the wine can be pushed up and producers actually choose when they go in to label their wine as a much smaller micro appellation, they choose this because they know that just from this name, they can earn more than perhaps selling five times the amount without having that name on the bottle. It is a fascinating area and it also produces white wines, but today we are just focusing on Syrah. Um, really, really worth trying if you can get your hands on some. To generalise a whole area is difficult, but in terms of old world Syrah, just so we can bracket it, um, you'd be looking for a medium bodied wine with good acidity, um, full of black fruit, oozing with black currants and blackberries and bilberries. Um, there'd definitely be this spice element in there as well. When it's aged, uh, leather, bacon, black pepper is also a really common aroma to be found in Rhone Syrah. And I just want to make it clear at this point, it's not a common aroma in Australian Shiraz, which we're moving on to now. So if anybody tries to sell you an Australian Shiraz, and I'm talking about the style here, and telling you it's got black pepper elements into it, just be slightly wary. Now, Australia certainly has much warmer conditions, a much warmer climate. So the Shiraz grapes, the Shiraz wine produced there is already going to be far more fruit forward and the fruits are probably going to be more tropical, they'll be darker, you'll feel lower acidity. The areas that Shiraz is grown in Australia, the two primary areas are the Barossa Valley and probably the Hunter Valley. The Hunter Valley is has this classic tasting note of sweaty saddles uh, for anyone who's been up there just north of Sydney and tasted uh, Shiraz from that area. But it's probably the Barossa Valley in the south of Australia that people think about uh, when we talk about Shiraz from Australia. In fact, um, Australian wine producers growing Shiraz and producing it to such a high level are often known as Rhone Rangers. The Barossa Valley is actually known by wine producers and wine critics alike as being the premium area for fine wine in Australia. 
Um, it was actually German immigrants who first started planting there in the 1800s, the late 19th century. Um, and a lot of the towns there still retain their German quality. There are two key types of Shiraz that are produced there, the old style and the new style. The classic style tends to be soft, uh, soft acidity, black fruits, leather and spice as it ages. And the more modern style is probably what most people think about when we think of Australian Shiraz, which is just this wah, mouthful of black fruit and um, tannins and exceptionally ripe grapes and high levels of alcohol. And where I mentioned that the Rhone Valley has this sort of classic peppery characteristic that's overlaid with a lot of brooding black fruit, Australia does not have the black pepper element, but one thing that does tend to characterize a lot of its Shiraz is eucalyptus. Um, so that is a key component that you can often pick out on an Australian Shiraz. The vines are also much older in Australia, so you can expect much more concentrated fruit. Um, plums, chocolates, licorice as it ages, really mouth filling. Um, and although it might have more noticeable tannins and more noticeable alcohol, if you leave it long enough, if you leave it to age and soften out, it will just feel so sort of voluptuous, luscious, velvety on the palate. Definitely a food wine, I'd say, in fact, both of them. And both styles, both Old World Sierra and New World Shiraz pair extremely well with steak, any kind of red meat to cut through those tannins, noticeable or unnoticeable. If not, if meat isn't your thing, then mushrooms, um, sort of meaty vegetables go really, really well with these two wines. Now, if you don't fancy that full on flavour of Australia, um, and perhaps you don't want to spend on the, the full-on price of a Northern Rhone uh, and you're keen to try something similar in style, but from the New World, you could always try Chile or South Africa, which are both producing some excellent, I won't call them replicas because it's their own style, but some excellent wines that are more Old World in style rather than tending to the kind of on alcoholness of the New World wines. Now, another grape that's also incredibly popular for planting in both Australia and France um, is Merlot. Merlot is a grape that is about, a red grape that is about 300 years old, originating from the Bordeaux region in southwest France, um, but also planted heavily in other parts of the world. In fact, it is the second most planted grape in the whole world after Cabernet Sauvignon. In France, it probably came to fame for its role it plays in the Bordeaux blend, where it pairs up with grapes, more robust grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and just provides a more perfumed, uh, softer side to that grape. Um, and in Australia, it does similar things as well. You can find it in areas like the Barossa or the Hunter or Eden Valley. And it's often used as a blending grape because of its more aromatic characteristics. It doesn't have the tannic quality or harshness that you can find in other grapes. Um, and it just provides this lovely sort of yin to the yang of a, of a more harsh grape. The name in French actually means little blackbird, that's in old French dialect, which might allude somehow to the colour of the wine that the grape can produce. Sometimes it can have the opacity of a Cabernet Sauvignon in the glass. So if you're doing a blind tasting and you don't know what grape it is, one really useful tip if, in a young Merlot is if you tilt the glass over your white background and the wine has a slightly red rim, uh, it's probably going to be a Merlot. This is something that is totally unique to Merlot wines. It, it manages to create these jammy, black fruits of the forest, velvety, soft wines all over the world that taste slightly different depending on where they're grown. And of course, they're not just grown in France and Australia. 
You can find Merlot in places like Moldova, Romania, Germany, uh, in the New World areas like Chile, particularly impressive Merlots, Argentina as well, and of course, California. Now, Californian Merlot, the one main difference to European Merlot is the texture of the wine. What Californian producers wanted to offer consumers was Bordeaux without the pain, to quote Jancis Robinson, a very well-known English wine critic. And they began creating, producing Merlot in a much more lush, full-bodied texture. In the 90s, this kind of went to their detriment when people started loving the style and bulk production came and uh, the wines began to be being made too sweet, too jammy and too full on and they kind of lost their personality a bit. But essentially, this is the main difference between Californian Merlot and European Merlot is the texture of the wine. If you are a fan of this style, then producers, then producers in California like Havens Creek, Silverado, Vineyards, Matanzas are all producing really, really good versions of that style. If you prefer it a little crisper, then in the US, areas like Washington State are also producing Merlot, but much more refined, um, sort of crisp acidity, lighter in the body as well. Chile is a country that is producing fabulous examples of this grape, but they're providing as well sort of the bridge between the two styles, between that full-on Californian style and the more refined European Bordeaux style of Merlot. Um, and producers like Casa La Postole, um, who uh, the wine I'm thinking of is the Cuvée Alexandre, is fabulous. Um, it has the style of California, but without that overwhelming sort of palate flooding texture. If you're trying it from France and Bordeaux, then definitely head to the right side of the banks. Appellations such as Saint-Emilion, Pomerol, huge flagship wines um, such as Chateau Petrus. All of these appellations are producing superb Merlot heavy, Merlot heavy wines. Well worth the taste if you can get your hand on some bottles. Wine producing areas like South Africa, um, which are sometimes only thought of in terms of Chenin Blanc or Pinotage, are also producing some excellent versions of barrel aged Merlot, really, really worth the try. So Shiraz versus Merlot or Syrah versus Merlot, which one to try? Well, again, both of these grapes, as I've mentioned, come in two sort of landmark styles, the international, more full bodied, more fruit forward style, um, and then the more refined European style. I love both of them as single varietals, monocépage, or when they're blended with other grapes as well. Um, if you like spicy, sort of peppery wines, then definitely Old World Syrah. Uh, if you love sort of tannic, full-bodied, textured wines, then you could try a New World Shiraz or even a Californian Merlot. Uh, if you prefer jammy fruits, fruits of the forest, soft more perfumed violets than Old World Merlot uh, and if you like all of those flavour characteristics but just with a hugely more silky luscious mouthfeel then head towards um, California or New World Merlot as well. I hope this has given you some insight into both of these grapes um, and a little starter of regions where you can start to try from and I look forward to tasting more wines with you coming soon.